What is up, everybody? Stock Watch Sunday is live, and we are not in my normal spot, right? So you guys know that, like, I'm not here in uh, at my normal desk in my normal office in my normal studio. I am on location. We're actually doing some work here, and guys, I have a special guest with me. Check this out. <laughs> it's Jake. Hold on. You're not on. Oh, you're on. You're on. I can't hear you. Hold on. Here we go. Oh, you're muted. There you go. Elliot. Hello, hello. <laughs> Testing. Yeah. Good? There's Jake. What's up, guys? So if you guys don't know, that's Jake uh, with We Trade HQ. He built the castle. I did. That I is did. We Trade HQ. It's just my job to bring you bring you all here. That's all right. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, obviously I got Jake here with me. Uh, we're doing a lot of stuff uh, with Christian is down here as well. We're uh, in North Carolina and uh, just doing a lot of really cool stuff. It's one of those things where um, we don't get to see each other a whole lot, but we, we work remotely. So it was kind of a good opportunity for us all to meet up with each other. And uh, yeah, Jake's experiencing Southern hospitality and uh, it's he's he's had his first fried, what, first fried, first fried catfish, fried right? Catfish, yeah, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, some barbecue. So it's been pretty awesome. Yeah. Um, as I'm seeing some people roll in, roll in here, uh, I just want to welcome a few folks. Um, and uh, what's going on, Quick Fox? What's up, Bob? What's going on, uh, Colton? <laughs> Aleem, good to see you. What's up, McTag? Freightliner, good to see you. Happy Sunday to you as well. Um, good to see you guys. So if you're just showing up for the first time ever, I want to welcome you to Own the Chaos. This is my channel here, and uh, I've made it my mission to help you own the chaos that is the stock market. The stock market is crazy and chaotic, and that's no more, you know, def the definition of that is is definitely what we're in right now. And so, um, you know, we're going to talk about that a little bit. What to expect in the stock market right now. We're going to do things a little bit differently because of the climate that we're in at this point in time. And I'm going to give you guys, I think, uh, a, a fresh new perspective on the virus fears, how that's impacting the stock market and how that's going to impact it going forward. And what history has told us as far as these types of viruses, uh, you know, and, and how it impacts the stock market and what you should, you know, look out for. So, um, <laughs> Corona's nice. What's up? It's so cold outside. Good to see you. Uh, so if you guys, um, you know, are visiting for the first time again, like I said, welcome. I'd encourage you to, to like and subscribe this if uh, you want to see more content like this. Each Sunday, I go live with folks from Sunday, from 8.30 p.m. Eastern time for about an hour or so. And then Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, I put out videos as it relates to the stock market, what's going on, give you some pointers. Um, and it's just a really good community within our, our uh, YouTube community. But we have an even bigger community outside of YouTube, and that is We Trade HQ, which is why I was showing you Jake over there. We've built a platform for you to be able to learn and grow and celebrate each other's success on the community that we're in. And it, it's just a great great community to be part of. So we want to go, go over to wetradehq.com. Links are down in the description below. It's free to join. There's plenty of people that are tuning in right now that are a part of the We Trade HQ fam, and we'd love to have you there. Uh, also, you can see a couple of people already have badges. I just opened up memberships to uh, my YouTube channel. So if you want to get daily, daily watch lists uh, before the market opens, um, be, be sure to sign up for the membership. You get special badges as well, too, which is kind of cool. And um, so, yeah, it's a, it's a pretty pretty cool, cool experience. You also get a, a live Q&A with me once a week, which I'll be starting off this Friday. So be sure to check that out. If you want to sign up, just click the Join button next to the subscribe button and uh be happy to see you there so what's going on what's going on jj cabrera good to see you what's up heart attack trader uh so cold outside Fortnite. just turned 18 wanting to invest my money so corona is nice for me yeah yeah i mean it's a good time i guess for the for you to start investing in the stock market when things are cheap so let's talk about that a little bit so before we get into the stocks that i want to watch um you know it it's it's a little crazy, right? Everybody wants to talk about how the uh, the sky is falling. There's a lot of chicken littles out there, right? And, you know, what I want to tell you is that this is a perfect time to take opportunities to start scaling in and start to buy some of these stocks that are extremely oversold. And there's a lot of people that are calling for this to go lower. And what history has told us, okay? History has told us that 11 out of the last 12 pandemics that happened just like this, have turned into green markets and, and, and from their bottoms have, have exploded exponentially. 
the only time that that didn't happen was when AIDS came out was back in the 80s. It was the only time that didn't happen. And I'm talking about uh, the pneumonic plague, there uh, all kinds of other stuff, uh, swine flu, bird flu, you name it. Anything that happened that impacted our economy, that impacted the global economy, um, we came out better than where you know from from the the lows and, and by a lot. And so, and I'm not talking just a year or two out. I'm talking six months to twelve months. Let's just talk about swine flu for a second. Swine flu killed 575,000 people. 61 million people were infected. 575,000 people died. The stock market crashed. And then it came up 40% 12 months later, 40%. Now we all know history doesn't always predict what the future is going to, to, you know, what, what the future is going to hold for us. But, you know, 11 out of 12 times where the, where we've had issues like this with, you know, uh, pandemics and, and epidemics with Ebola. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you anything that we've kind of come across over the, the last f- several decades impacts the market very briefly and then we see a nice pop and then a continuation. We always don't, we never see a straight back up V pattern like we saw in 2018, which in 2018 it did happen, uh, that we had the worst uh, decline since the Great Depression in 2018 in December, if you guys remember that. And then where did it go? We saw all time high after all time high after all time high the next year. And so, you know, I think this is just another bump in the road. This is a correction that we needed, we desperately needed. And so this is another opportunity, in my opinion, for you to, to hop in and get some, uh, you know, some really cheap shares on some really, really good stocks. So we're going to talk about that. Um, and so, yeah, let me go ahead and welcome a few more folks. Uh, what's up, John? Good to see you, uh, Calvin. Um, every All good here. Okay. You guys, okay, we're good. We're good. All right. So it looks like it reconnected. So I'll just uh, I'll just keep going, guys. We'll keep going with it. So uh, again, uh, I'll just repeat this real quick. I'm watching Zoom. Zoom's one of the ones to definitely watch out for. This is a stay-at-home type stock uh, that you know we've been kind of categorizing with like your Netflixes, Roku's, that sort of thing. Um, and they have earnings that come out this week. And earnings that come out on uh, March the 4th, so that is Thursday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, after hours, earnings per share expected to be uh, at a loss of one cent. I think they end up having a beating earnings, but more importantly, I think that they have a better outlook, and that's what I'm looking for on this one. Let me go ahead and share my screen here with you and so you can guys can kind of take a look at the chart here. You can see how this has moved up. Uh, quite a bit over the last several days. And this is why it's moving up because there's going to be a lot more people, a lot more downloads. Uh, Zoom has already reported that as a result of coronavirus. Um, and so this, I think, is going to have a pretty good outlook uh, moving forward. So it, I don't know if it really necessarily matters what goes on with earnings this time around. I think the outlook is what's going to be uh, the most impactful. So I, uh, what I'm looking for here on Zoom is that um, you know they have a, a really good outlook as far as downloads and that sort of thing as a result of coronavirus, you know, it's, 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 it's a terrible thing to have happen, right? This outbreak that we're experiencing, but there are positives in certain lights. And so this one, I think is definitely going to be one of those situations where we see that. Now, if we go in and look at this on like a 30 minute chart, you can see how this kind of came back down, had a really serious pullback. And I think that's the pullback that zoom actually needed. So I would expect zoom to actually have a really good day, uh, perhaps on Monday, but it definitely on Tuesday, if you guys um, have been following the news and following politics, Super Tuesday is on Tuesday. So, well, it'll be very telling to see what happens um, as a result of Super Tuesday. Who's going to be uh, in the running? Will it be Bernie Sanders? Will it be Joe, Joe Biden? I think that uh, it'll be really interesting to see how this works out. I think if, if Bernie Sanders ends up winning, you know, it could impact the stock market not so in a not-so-nice way uh, for a lot of reasons uh, that Bernie's actually, you know, kind of you know expressed that it'll be implementing as far as you know wall street traders traders like you and me and as as well as the the healthcare sector so uh you know no matter what side of the aisle you sit on it's just a fact that he's been made it he's made it very well known that he doesn't he's not looking to take too ki- kindly to the healthcare sector or anybody who trades on wall street so uh, i think that it will impact the stock market 
short term. Again, I think this is going to be a short term impact. So just be on the lookout for that as far as Super Tuesday is concerned. But nevertheless, looking at Zoom here, looking at 104.91 seems to be a pretty decent resistance here. So if that ends up breaking back over that, I think that it could end up being another very bullish move on Zoom, especially if we hear more about uh, coronavi coronavirus uh, outbreaks and diagnoses. And so that's going to be one that I'll be looking out for. Again, after hours, earnings are on 3-4. So on March 4th, and the earnings per share are expected at a loss of uh, one penny. So we'll see how that works out. Let me check back in with you guys to see if we're good. Um, looks like uh, looks like we're okay. <laughs> Hillbilly Internet. <laughs> um Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for understanding, guys. I appreciate your patience. Hopefully um, most of you guys ended up sticking around. So definitely appreciate it. Uh, all right. So next we're going to be watching is going to be AMD. So AMD actually has their analyst earning analyst uh, report. And I'll come back over here and we can look at AMD. Their analyst report comes out on Thursday. And so this will be interesting because Intel and AMD are kind of the top, the two top dogs on this, right? And Intel, um, as far as the chip space is concerned, is really trying to make sure that they stay ahead of AMD. But I think AMD actually ends up starting to pull ahead of them too uh, with the types of chips that they have, end up having coming out. So, and AMD is obviously already oversold as it is too, as, as the rest of the market is. But I think AMD is definitely undervalued at this point. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what they have to say on that uh, uh, analyst report. Looking at the chart here, though, it looks as if there's a pretty tough resistance here at 4550. So I would look at 4550 to be the area that it needs to break in order for it to continue to make a, a nice bullish move and maybe even fill this gap at 4711 and start to make start to make a continuation there. Here's the thing, guys. If I'm looking at the way the market's been moving, I think Monday's going to be a really tough day. We're already looking at futures here. Dow's already down around three to 400 points at this point. Um, and so I think Monday is going to be a tough day. What I will say, though, is that I think that Tuesday ends up being the day that we start to see a, nice, a nicer move back up. Maybe we start to get to a bottom on Monday. And so, you know, stocks like AMD, Apple, you know, your, your Amazons, all those are going to be ones that you're going to want to probably try to scale into. And I've seen a lot of people talk about this is now this is now this is the time to buy. Now this is the time to buy. And yes, it is. But don't take all the cash that you have saved up and just dump it all at once. Scale yourself in. You know, it's it, investing. If you're if you're doing the investing route and creating and building a portfolio, you want to scale yourself in slowly. Don't just start piling cash into the stock market because it's been down so much. Buy a little bit here and there. See if the, nobody can actually predict where the absolute bottom is going to be, just like nobody can predict where the absolute top is going to be. So you, you have to hedge that a little bit. So start buying in some of the cheaper shares right now and then work yourself in. And then as the stock market gradually starts to move back up, that's when it kind of lets you know, okay, you know, maybe we're starting to you know make a nice move back up after this sharp correction. So um, AMD, like I said, is definitely going to be one to watch out for, especially as that Thursday uh, uh, uh report comes out we'll we'll see how that uh ends up working out for amd so let me check back in see how everybody's doing my friend has 6k amd calls expiring march 4th yeah pray for him <laughs> we'll see we'll see um but yeah i mean look i think it, most of like i said aim between amd you know any of these stocks that were finally reaching their their true valuation points, you know, that were impacted by, you know, the, the, the virus and, and, and all of that. I, I, I just, like I said, I think at this point in time, we're in a very oversold market and it's a really good opportunity for people who have been stockpiling cash to start buying into these, some of these stocks. So uh, Blade Runner made a good point here. March 5th could be a big day for AMD. It's expected they will announce the, uh, that, yeah, the RX uh, 5950. Now I will say full disclosure, I am not, um, you know, the biggest chip expert there is out there. But we do have people within our community that are, and Blade Runner is one of those guys uh, that's been following this very, very closely, uh, knows, knows a lot about AMD and is very knowledgeable on this one, has been investing in this one for a long time. So, um, you know, I, like I said, I think this is going to be a good good opportunity for AMD to get in on cheap. Already made a really nice move. Even before uh, the stock market started to make that nice surge uh, at the end of the day on Friday, AMD was already having a good day before that. So um, I think there's going to be more people that sees value in AMD, especially leading up to that Thursday um, um, uh, report. And so this definitely one is to watch out for this week. All right. Next one's going to be 
mRNA. So you guys, if you have been uh, watching Stockwatch Sunday the last couple of weeks, and we've been talking about how the uh, how the virus has been impacting uh, the stock market, this one's a little bit crazy. Uh, so mRNA has already shipped off uh, a potential vi- uh, vaccine for the virus. Uh, it's going through phase one trials right now. And so I think that this one's probably going to be the front runner as it relates to all of the uh, you know, vi- virus-related stocks. I think mRNA is the front runner. The other one's GILD, so Gilead is going to be another one. I don't have this on Stockwatch Sunday tonight, but just keep that one in mind. Gilead also uh, has medications for antiviral I'm sorry, antiviral medications for coronavirus as they've already created antivirals for Ebola, uh, SARS, a a lot of other diseases. And so they've started to create one for uh, um, coronavirus as well. But mRNA has the vaccine. It's going through phase one trials, and I think this one's going to be the front runner. You can see that it's been really choppy over the last several days. Uh, This is on the 30-minute chart, so there's no pattern forming here. But this is one, like I said, to just watch out for. It's starting to create a little bit of a resistance, I would say maybe around $26, but it's it's, it's pretty thin if you ask me. Um, It's not something that I would hang my hat on, but this is something that I would just watch. if maybe if it breaks back up over 2750 would be a good entry point. If we're looking at the chart here, this is kind of where I'm looking uh, at that resistance point there. We can move this down just a little bit just to kind of be a little bit more accurate there. There you go. So around 2750 is where I would look for to for it to break. If it's going to continue, it should continue after it breaks that 2750 target. So that's what I'm looking at is mRNA. But I would say that if there's anything that I would hang my hat on long term, it would be mRNA as far as coronavirus is concerned. Look, you guys have, have reached out to me and asked me about other stocks like APT, TOMZ, some of those other penny stocks that are related to the virus itself. Those are very, very short term and they could very easily drop at any moment. So let's just talk about APT as an example. So if you guys don't know about APT, APT is a, um, as a supplies company mainly surrounded around masks. That's pretty much their only business is surgical masks. And so uh, if there's any breakthrough or any mention of a slowdown of coronavirus um, throughout the world, you're going to see APT just tank. It's going to it's gonna tank. It's not going to come back. And so I just don't want anybody to get caught in that trap. Maybe it continues to go up. Maybe it doesn't. So just be on the lookout for that. There's a couple of other penny stocks out there as it relates to like misters and this, this, this that, and the other. But all of those stocks will have a significant drop if there's any positive news that comes out on coronavirus, which I think will happen sooner rather than later. So, uh, you know, Moderna, this is one, a company that could continuously make money because they're creating a vaccine, and that vaccine is going to impact, you know, the entire world. So I would imagine that mRNA is going to be the one that I would hang my head on the most, especially for a longer-term swing play, uh, and Gilead will be the other one, G-I-L-D. So, you know, like I said, we could talk about the other ones if you want, but in my opinion, those are going to be ones that are going to really kind of bite you in the end if you don't have your finger right on the trigger ready to sell. Because like I said, as soon as they come out with any kind of positive news as it relates to coronavirus, that's what's really going to impact you. And so let's take a look at some of the comments, questions that people might have. Uh, Alan says he's been watching GILD. Hey, what's up, Volley? Good to see you, man. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so actually... Well, we've reached a point in time where uh, I can take some calls here. So if you guys want to call in, let me make sure we're good to go. If you guys want to call in, it's going to be the same number as it was last week. Um, let me get my phone up here. Now, bear with me because I've only done it one week in a row. Well, this is my second week in a row, I should say. Sorry. Uh, but um, the number is going to be 443-281-3763. Uh, 443, I'll put it in the chat here. Uh, 281-3763. Now, we had pretty good success with this uh, last time around, so I'm hoping that we got some good calls this time around as well. So if anybody wants to call in, ask a question about a particular stock, about the stock market in general, um, you know, I'd be happy to, to answer your calls to the best of my ability, and we'll just see where it goes from there. So um, while we're waiting on a phone call, I will go ahead and uh, answer any questions that's in the chat, what's your thought on CELZ? Uh, CELZ has is, is just been sitting there forever. It's a waiting game. If you're planning on, uh, you know, being patient with something like CELZ, you're probably going to continue to be patient with it. I mean, that's really what it all what it boils down to. It, there's not much else going on with CELZ, in my opinion. Uh, 
<laughs> I'm not still at the hotel. Uh, some gracious friends here in North Carolina have allowed me to, to use this space that I'm in right now. And uh, so, yeah, had some Internet issues, and but uh, we're uh, we're making it work. Uh, is SBES still worth holding? You know, SBES, if you guys have been following that one, that was a merger play. Uh, you know, at this point in time, if you think the merger is still coming, then maybe it's worth holding on to. But there hasn't been any inclination, any signs that the merger is going to be happening anytime soon. So for me personally, when you look at something like SBES, the real move is when there, the, the merger is rumored to happen. And it's very, it's not not very common that the mergers actually go through, um, and in this, especially in this case. And SBES, the merger is a Chinese merger, so imagine I imagine that it's probably going to take even longer than anticipated if the merger actually goes through. So keep that in mind as well. Um, can Jake talk about the bots? Uh, so yeah, I mean Jake's been working on a on a artificial intelligence bot. Um, so yeah. Uh, that's really all we're going to talk about at this point in time. <laughs> we're going to keep keep that uh, close to the vest. Um, uh, Mike B says coronavirus related stocks might continue to make a run up, in my opinion, and I I agree. But I think in the short term, you know, uh, like I said, APT, any of those other ones um, are are going to be a short term type of play, and it's going to be very erratic. It's going to be very choppy. So just be careful with those. Um, I Jake's I'm making mind. <laughs> um, all right. So again, guys, uh, four one four four three two eight one three seven six three is the number if you guys want to call in. Um, we had a, a couple of really good calls last weekend. So if you guys have any questions, you want to uh, give me a ring. Um, feel free to do so. Let me go ahead and take a look at a couple of other things here. See if anybody has any other questions. I mean, yeah, you can put it in the chat as well. Um, HM says, uh, personally, I'm loaded on VXRT and GHSI. I think VXRT is probably going to be the better play out of the two. Um, but again, short-term short term play there, in my opinion. Um, all right. So we're gonna, just going to give it another minute or two. If anybody has any other questions, any other particular stocks that they would like me to take a look at, I certainly uh, would... Uh, TNXP. Okay, there we go, JJ. TNX, TNXP. Let's pull that up on the chart here. TNXP. All right, so I'm pulling this up here on WeTrade HQ. Let me pull this uh pull this up here so this one's been really erratic as well um and the chart here for me personally so tnxp is a uh, pharmaceutical holdings a clinical stage biopharma company focuses on discovering developmental small molecules and biologics uh do they have any news let's see what they have news wise um surging wednesday morning last week collaboration with southern research to support development of a vaccine so here's what i'll say about this uh jj cabrera again um Kind of going back to Moderna. Moderna is the front runner here. So, unless for some reason there's some sort of fallout with Moderna, um, and I'm coming back here, unless there's some sort of fallout with Moderna, like I don't know, the vaccine doesn't work. Um, that's the only case that I can make for something like TNXP. The one thing that I would watch out for something like TNXP, just by looking at the chart, you can tell that it's dilution all over this thing. Uh, with it, there's a reason that it's valued at a dollar eight at this point in time. And so maybe there's uh, some nice movement on this. We've already seen that in the last couple of days, just with the announcement of that collaboration. But you know they're kind of behind the eight ball at this point in time, in my opinion. And so with TNXP, you know. If they end up even having a strong move, there's probably a pretty good chance they'll end up having an offering shortly thereafter, which will then bring the price of the stock down even more. So just be c careful with this one. I'm not saying that it won't move, but just if you decide to make a play on this one, just be very cautious of that of those facts that they've been diluting forever. And, you know, more than likely, if they have any kind of strong move out of this stock, they'll probably give you an offering that'll just bring the price of it right back down. So that's that's a that's a, that's a tough part about a lot of these um, plays is that, uh, especially in the biopharma space, is that most of these biopharma companies are, are loads and loads in debt. And so if they aren't diluting, there's chance, chances are that they're going to be having some sort of, um, you know, uh, uh, offering at some point in time. So 
you know, it's just it's just tough out there uh, with a lot of these biofarmer stuff. Um, Fishing for Success is now a new member. Nicely done. Welcome to the welcome to the community. Appreciate you. Someone has to be brave out there. Yeah. Uh, anybody wants to give me a call? Like I said, uh, four four. What did I say? Four four three. It's still a new number. I got. It's not. It's not my personal number. Um, four four three two eight one three seven six three. The number's in the chat there. If you guys want to look it up, feel free to call in. I do see a question about Tesla. Yes or yes. Yes. <laughs> I think Tesla is definitely cheap here. Uh, you know, it's in the six six hundred dollar range. I'd be buying. I'd be. I'd be very much a buy here in six hundred dollar range, and, and and even even lower. You know, I like I said, I wouldn't take all of your cash, throw it all on on red at this point in time. Scale yourself in. Um, but yeah, Tesla, Apple, Amazon, um, a lot of these other companies that were valued way up here. I mean, if if you were buying it at two thousand dollars, right? If you're buying at twenty two hundred dollars, Amazon I'm talking about, why would you then? not buy it at $1,900 or $1,800, right? So if you're buying way up here, you're going to want to buy it down there as well. So that's just how I would look at it, um, in my opinion. you know. And like I said, just scale yourself in. Don't just start th- dumping cash, but start working your cash in slowly. And I think that you'll do very well uh, if you end up doing that. <laughs> Jake will get assimilated by SpaceX. <laughs> Jake gives a thumbs up. <laughs> he's, he's, he's all about that. He'll be the mastermind behind Skynet. There you go. <laughs> um, uh, Colton says, I'm a millennial. I'm afraid of phone calls. <laughs> All right, fine. I don't blame you. I won't blame you. Um, uh, let's see here. What else we got? Aline loves Tesla. Every I think, it, I think we all love Tesla. Uh, there needs to be a coyote emoji. Okay, we'll come up with one of those. Um Oh uh, yeah. So uh, Kyle Lover says TNXP did do an offering. Uh, that's why it dropped 16 million. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> uh, Revolve Group. Let me see. Revolve Group. Let me let me search that out. Revolve Group. Let's pull that up here. Internet's still being wonky here, so hopefully it'll get pulled up. Just a sec. RVLV. Hold on one moment. Let me get this pulled up here. Yeah, I'm not getting RVLV pulled up. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Come on. Let's do this. Okay. So charts pulling up here. RVLV is a uh, engages in retail of next generation fashion for millennial consumers. It co- operates through Revolve. Um, at this point in time, let's see. It's starting to move up a little bit here. If, if I'm just looking strictly on the chart, okay, uh, without knowing much else about the company, just looking strictly on the chart here. There's a pretty, uh, pretty good resistance here around fifth, sixteen dollars, and then again here at um, if this is anything like I would say a Ross. Or, um, uh, you know, some sort of company like that where they do, uh, like, outsourcing of, you know, non-name brand uh, clothes and that sort of thing. I think they end up doing actually pretty well. Uh, So, we'll see how this looks um, going into next week. But if you look at the chart here, there's a couple of gaps that need to be filled here. So, this one looks like it's actually been filled here at $16. So, if this ends up breaking up over that, should make a nice move. A uh, nice continuation there until it gets to about $17 or just before that, around $16.80. Um, and so, yeah, that's that's where I would be looking for on that one as far as Revolve is concerned. Uh, but to be completely honest with you, I don't know much about the company as far as fundamentals are concerned. So I'm just strictly going off of the chart here. So that hope that helps. But that's what I, that's how I would be playing this is if I'm just looking at the chart. But again, th- this is what I would do. I would still wait to see how everything reacts after after Monday's open and then make your make your decision from there. So if this ends up coming back down, probably I would say around fifteen dollars or, or lower. I mean you could see this has been reacting to the market pretty strongly here. Several gap downs. So the low here is at fourteen fifty. I'd say that's probably pretty oversold. Um and maybe even around fifteen dollars that probably you try to scoop some up there as well. But this looks pretty cheap if I'm looking at the chart here and looking at the history. Hasn't been this low since um, uh, three months ago, maybe 
and it's been making a nice move up. So I like it as far as the charts concerned. Looks like they've been doing a lot of good stuff. Let me check back in with you guys. Yeah, OTC, I probably would stay away from most of them at this point in time. Um, uh, yeah, so Lost One says uh, R- RVLV uh, is uh, could be a, a nice long hold. So, yeah, I mean, look, the chart looks good, I would say. It uh, looks pretty oversold. Um yeah, no, that's all right. Hey, we'll just keep we'll just keep plugging away. We'll keep offering the phone calls, but um, you know, I'm not going to pressure anybody into it. IQST was the only OTC that did anything. There's a couple other ones. TOMZ did it very well. Um, we've talked about PASO uh, previously as well. I'm still holding on that one, um, but uh, P- PASO has a pending merger, so we'll 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 see how that goes as far as OTCs are concerned. There. You know, in this in this climate, you know, it's it's really tough to try to encourage anybody to, to look at any over the counter penny stocks because it's like there's already enough volatility and fear going on in the in the major markets. So, but you know, PASO is definitely one that I would look for. Um, uh, Jose is asking about Carnival C- Cruise Line. So anything, any of the travel stocks, Carnival, um, American Airlines, United, any of those, I would stay away from Boeing. I would stay away from Boeing. Boeing's already got enough problems as it is, and now they're now they're going to have travel issues. So any of those travel type stocks, I would stay away from at least for now until we start to see the, the market turn around. Um, but you know, yeah, I would I would stay away from that one, um, uh, Jose. Lawrence, yeah. So I do realize that they won't be experiencing for the losses for the next three months, but that's why I wouldn't I wouldn't be investing in it. So I mean. I don't see stocks move based off of outlooks. You know, a lot of times that's what happens. So I wouldn't expect, even if even if their their next uh, quarterly earnings are positive, there's still that underlying black cloud that's you know where they've had the quarantine people on their, on their ships. So it's not going to be a good outlook for them. So long t- longer term, I wouldn't I wouldn't be hanging around in Carnival Cruise Line. Uh, or any any of the, the travel stocks until we see some sort of move back up. They're just going to be really risky, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I would stay away physically, too. But, see, that's that's what, you know, uh, QF says, I would stay away physically, too. No boats or planes for me, thanks. And that's exactly why I would say, you know, it's probably not a good idea to be investing in any of those types of stocks right now because, uh, because of that same mentality. That same mentality is what's going to get, you know, which which is which isn't going to bode well for those companies, you know. Within the next, I would say six months, it's not going to be good for them at all. Um, Bob's asking about how about metals. So metals is going to be probably something to watch out for. Gold took kind of a beating t- later in the week this past week, so I would say gold's probably something that I definitely would watch out for. Here's one thing that I will say: there's a lot of people that are asking me about JNUG. A lot of people asking me about JDST. All those minor ETFs. They have nothing to do with the price of gold. Newsflash. If, you pl- if you're looking at JNUG as it relates to gold, JNUG will move with gold at times, but more times than not, it's going to move with the actual market. So I wouldn't be trading JNUG if you're looking to, to, to make any kind of metals plays. I would actually look at GOLD, the actual physical ticker GOLD. It's nice and cheap. It doesn't move all over the place, all kinds of crazy. Uh, and so it's a really good stock to kind of get yourself into, especially if you're new to trading, if you're new to investing, GOLD, it's Barrick Gold. Uh, CEOs are really, really, uh, really got it together. They're always a really great company. They have a re- really good balance sheet. So I would look at GOLD if you're looking to get into any kind of gold relief related uh, stocks you could always play you know gld some of the other larger cap etfs that aren't leveraged um and 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 look at those for potential metal place slv is another good one that's nice and cheap uh you could get into but yeah i would definitely look at those uh for potential um you know moves up you know if if these coronavirus you know if the coronavirus black cloud stays sticks around it's people with my thoughts that yep that's exactly what it is. Uh, JBLU. Yeah, we can take a look at JBLU. Let's take a look here. Let me see if I can get that pulled up. JBLU. JetBlue. So this is going to be another one, just like I was talking about with American Airlines, Carnival Cruise Lines, any of those travel-type stocks. It's going to be one of those things where it'll be really touch and go for a while, and I, I think it's something to be really risky to, to put your money into, at least right now. 
and, and, and wait until after the market really starts to move and people start to feel safe enough again to travel, um, you know, because that fear is going to be stronger than any type of greed. And so right now people are, are still playing through their fear. And so anything that's related to travel stocks, anything that involves anybody going outside, you know, and that includes stocks like McDonald's, you know, McDonald's is probably, you know, are going to be one that may end up suffering because people aren't, are going to be afraid to go out of their homes or be in heavily concentrated areas where there's just a lot of people. So, you know, those are going to be kind of those stocks that I would actually end up staying away from, at least for the short term and, and, and wait for things to start turning around and where people start to feel more, uh, you know, safe again to travel and, and be outside essentially. So that's, that's something that I probably would end up staying away from. Um, Shopify, I think it's going to be a good one. I think Shopify will be a good one to get into, um, you know, for the sake of the same thing, you know, stay at home type stock. The only thing that I think Shopify will be in, impacted by is maybe some, some of the shipping, you know, the trucking business. We have some folks in here that are in, in the, uh, the trucking business uh, that are watching this live stream. They can probably attest to how, how tough it's been out there. And so that might al- already be impacted uh, by Shopify, Amazon, those types of things. So shipping might be might, might be an issue as it relates to the virus, but we'll see. Um, and so, but I think Shopify still is going to be a good one to definitely get in on the cheap. Um, we'll just kind of see where the bottom is, but th- that will definitely be one that I would end up scaling myself into. Like I said, that, that I would lump that into the the Apples and the Amazons uh, and Teslas and that sort of thing. Um, you guys whole account only option. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think D gas is, is it, the, the days are numbered on D gas. We'll see. Uh, but, um, I don't know if I would whole account you guys just yet. <laughs> um, all right. So if nobody's going to call in and the, and the questions are drying up, I'm going to go ahead and, and probably just, uh, let you guys go, uh, from here. So I'm going to go ahead and, and do that. Uh, but, um, We'll try again next week. Don't be afraid to call in. I, you know, I don't want to treat this like a Jim Cramer type of thing, but I think it's pretty fun to have people call. In. We had two guys call in last week. It was a lot of fun, and uh, I, I thought it just added a, a great new element to the Stock Watch Sunday. So I would definitely be looking forward to those if you guys want to call in next week. Uh, but as far as this week's concerned, I will go ahead and let you guys go. If you guys liked this video, if you got some value out of it, I certainly would appreciate a thumbs up. And if you want to see more Stock Watch Sundays in the future, make sure you're subscribing to this channel. Hit that notification bell. You guys know what to do. And as always, folks, I will see you all before the bell. And B. Smith is out. Enjoy the rest of your night.